Ahead on lunch break, today is Giving Tuesday. It's the eighth year for the event. We're going to tell you where and how you can make your money go the farthest. Plus, there's a new Peloton ad out. Have you seen this? Some people are outraged by it. We'll talk about it and let you decide. And it is the perfect gift for the sports fan on your list. We're playing Cleveland against the world on today's show. Your Tuesday lunch break is underway. It's your lunch break with Jay Crawford. And welcome to the show. I hope you're having a great Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining us. The show is lunch break. I'm Jay Crawford. <laughs> Betsy Kling is here. Stephanie Haney in the wings. She's going to join us uh, in just a little bit. Are you ready to play Cleveland against the world later? I have no idea what we're doing, <laughs> so who knows what's going to happen. It's a great new video game. If you have a sports fan on your shopping list, this is perfect, especially okay. if they're a Cleveland sports fan. I Definitely. But it's, it's going to be fun. It should okay. be cool. First on the menu, today is Travel Tuesday. Did, yeah, I, what is Did you this? even know that was a thing? I didn't know this was a thing, but I, I like the either. sound of it. It does sound cool. It became a thing in 2017. If you didn't know, what Travel Tuesday is. Here's a quick primer. Um, it goes along with all those other holidays. And the whole idea here is it's a psychology of a sale. Limited time. Right. You're getting a great deal. Fear of missing out. You yeah. got to take advantage of it. Uh, it's the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving. And the industry claims that prices are discounted up to 20% mm. on 40% or up to 40% rather on 20% of all flights. Hopper claims 18 <laughs> deals per second are made. And that's a 50% increase from the normal day. But I did some extensive reading on this because I wanted to know, am right. I missing out? Do I have to buy travel tickets today? And my takeaway, Betsy, this thing's a total gimmick. Not so much. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing really to it. Um, probably a waste of your time. I mentioned the psychology is it's a, a great deal, limited time. you got to act now. you got to act now. But according to Skyscanner, who studied this extensively, okay. Travel Tuesday prices are actually 2.4% higher than they were yesterday on Cyber Monday. Of course. And then now they are 11% cheaper than they were on Black Friday. <laughs> But you know the deal with the industry. You buy a ticket on Friday, you're going to pay a jacked up price. Right. You buy it on Tuesday, that's the cheapest day to buy air tickets. And I love how it's just close enough that you're like, ah, just deal with it and buy whatever and go right. wherever. Right. That, that's do what all they that want you to stuff. do. I looked at flights that I typically take. Right. No deals whatsoever. Right. Well, not only is it Travel Tuesday, giving travel, it is Giving Tuesday, which is traditionally a day that you can give back after a weekend of shopping. Joe Cronauer is live now at the Ronald McDonald House of Cleveland this morning. Joe, you've been out there all morning. There's so yeah. much good stuff happening today. It's about to get better too, Betsy, because here at the Ronald McDonald House right now, we're going to feature something for you here, but it's a great time to give on this Giving Tuesday because Thrive and Financial is matching every single donation. You can go on bit.ly bit.ly slash Ohio Gives or call 216-301-2090. Joe, get to the bunnies. I know. Sassy, you know all about this. This is Butterscotch. Yes. And this is Little Man. And this is Jill. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about your bun therapy bunnies. Yes. These are are registered and certified therapy animals. They've gone through training. They've, They've taken a test. All right. Yes. And now they are able to go out and visit. And, and they go here at the Ronald McDonald House. They yes. visit the entire families, the rooms. They come down. It's just an amazing, calming experience yes. to be with these little furry little creatures here. What a wonderful thing. The Ronald McDonald House is here, of course. Uh, you know, it's just so important to realize that, you know, when a child gets sick and they have to go for treatment at one of the nearby hospitals right across the street, by the way, it's just, you know, they come back home here. And they, 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 they are fed here. They do laundry here. They live here. But when therapy happens like this, it just does wonders for their psyche, doesn't it? Yes, they do. it really yeah, does. It, yeah. They're very calming. Yes, and you're very calming, <laughs> Sassy. So are you, Jill. Thank you both for being here. And really, thank you for, for, for calling and supporting our Giving Tuesday here. It's, it's a give -a for the Ronald McDonald House. Again, thanks to Thrive Financial for matching all the donations. All right? Jay, this is awesome. This is an awesome opportunity. I'm going to be petting bunnies here for the next couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And that's just good for your soul. Yeah. Giving is, and so is petting bunnies. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we not it. only is it good for your soul, but of course it could be good for your checkbook, too. There are some financial benefits that you can take advantage of if you donate to charity. Our friend CPA Kevin Meyerhoff is here, the CEO of NCA Financial Planners. You know, obviously there is some kickback when you donate and people can take advantage of that, especially here at the end of the year. 
Yes, maybe. Yes, maybe. Okay. <laughs> so there's, there's some things that go along with this. We need three items that you have to remember if you're going to be trying to go for any kind of tax deductions. Absolutely. And the first one is to itemize. Okay. If, if you can't itemize, so there's a standard deduction, which for married people is now $24,200. That's a lot. And, and, and for singles, half of that, $12,200. And so if you don't have enough... Um, property taxes, uh, mortgage interest, Business and charitable expenses. deductions. No, they don't count as an itemizer oh, necessarily. Yeah. So most people, <laughs> can, I'm most, out. most people can itemize. Right. They, they take the standard deduction, which is one reason why last year when this first came into play, charitable contributions are actually down for wow. many charities. So it's got to be over that amount so you could actually take the deduction on your tax return. Okay, so you have to be able to itemize. Now, you have to know who you're giving to, which needs to be a charity. Yeah, you can't give to your next door neighbor that's in need of something. <laughs> right? um, but, but so you have to make sure it's a 501c3 charity. Okay. There's a great website called Charity Navigator. You could go to that. It'll tell you if it qualifies or doesn't qualify. And they have identification numbers that you can submit with any of your documentation. Yes, they, they, they have identification numbers. Now, documentation brings up another thing. Okay. That's number three. If you give more than $250 to any charity, mm -hmm. you must have written documentation. Now, you don't, an acknowledgement, a written okay. acknowledgement. Now, you don't have to send that in with your tax return, but if you get audited, you better right. be able to produce it or you will not be able to get mm. the deduction. Itemize 501c3, $250 or more. Make sure you have documentation of it. You are a quick learner. This is all, <laughs> I, three things. I can remember three things. Now, if you have trouble remembering those three things, we do have it all written up on the web for you. Giving Tuesday, how to vet a charity before you donate. You can find that at WKYC.com. Kevin, thank you very much. Next on the menu. A new Peloton ad is out just in time for the holidays. And believe it or not, it actually has some people outraged. Here it is. We'll let you decide. Okay. Take a look. Okay, you ready? Yes. Now. A Peloton? Give it up for our first time ride. Right. First ride. I'm a little nervous, but excited. Let's do this. Five days in a row. You surprised? I am. 6 a.m. Yay. Rising with the sun. That was totally worth it. Let's go, Grace in Boston. 50 rides. She just said my name. A year ago, I didn't realize how much this would change me. Thank you. This holiday, give the gift of Peloton. Okay, um, there it is. Okay. You outraged? No. I didn't see a single thing in there that drew my ire. Not a single thing. I... Yeah, I think she got something and she took advantage of it and it makes her feel great. And she was so happy that <laughs> she wanted to gift back right. a video showing her appreciation for the gift. I wasn't outraged. Some are. Okay. Um, of, of course. Here's, here's a tweet from an ale drinker in Seattle. Okay. We'll set it up that way. Okay. Dude, I hate that Peloton commercial so much. Why is that already fit, rich woman the center of this ad and why does she look scared the whole commercial? We, we freeze-framed a shot from okay. it so you can take a look at it. I, I, I guess she's she scared. She nervous. But I'll tell you, I bought my wife one of these for Christmas last year, and <laughs> she loved it. No wonder you're talking about this. I love I mean, I just, I, well, I'm talking about it because I am so done with this fake outrage over everything. Mock outrage, yes. Why? I just don't see it. And I even watched it with that eye, Betsy. I'm like, okay, all right, okay, where? Okay, no, not there. Not there. One one commenter said, "Oh, it was like she was like, oh, thank you, and did, like doting on her husband." Right. Okay, I guess maybe. Uh. To me, she seemed like a woman who loved the gift. Right. And wanted to show appreciation. She could go cycle anywhere in the world that she wanted to cycle. I cycle in course. Paris, and I love it. Paris. The little video has streets yeah. through Paris. Any place you want to go. Any place you want to go, you can do the cycling thing. Well, I'll tell you what. Any place you want to go, people are talking about anything. And of course, we want to find out what's clicking in Cleveland. Good morning, Steph. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. Nice to see you all again. This one is very exciting to a lot of people, and it's been a long time coming. The first official trailer for Black Widow is out, and in it, we see former Russian spy Natasha Romanoff, played by Scarlett Johansson, meeting up with her so-called family to take care of some unfinished business. Look at this. We have to go back to where it all started. Lucky us. One thing's for sure, it's going to be a hell of a reunion. 
Now that woman with her there, that was actor Florence Pugh playing the character of Yelena Belova. Now that character becomes the second Black Widow in the comic book series. The trailer is trending number one on YouTube right now and everyone is freaking out about Black Widow finally getting a solo project after 10 years. Yes, that's right, this is ScarJo's ninth appearance in a Marvel film as Black Widow after first debuting in 2010's Iron Man 2. Now how about this for a 10 year challenge for ya? You can see ScarJo there as Black Widow in Iron Man 2 on the left, and that's her in Black Widow trailer on the right. She looks exactly the same, obviously. She hasn't changed. Great 10 year challenge there for her. Now this movie takes place in the two year time gap between Captain America Civil War and Avengers Infinity War. And people are very glad for this time travel because this is a spoiler if you haven't seen Avengers Endgame. Black Widow dies at the end of that one. Yeah. Hey, it's an old movie. If you haven't seen it by now, I'm sorry, but she's alive in this one. Now, Marvel says we do get to learn why she had to die in the Black Widow movie. That comes out in May, according to the movie's IMDb page, and you can watch that full trailer on our website at WKYC.com. Now, I gotta ask what you two are watching over there. Yeah, we are actually um, watching a trailer Frank, for The time, Irishman. Time you say Limited theatrical happened. release on November 1st, and it was released over Thanksgiving <laughs> weekend on Netflix. De Niro. Betsy, when you look at this cast, this literally yeah. is a Hall of Fame cast. It is. So directed by Martin Scorsese. Okay. The, the actors in this film include Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, and Joe Pesci. I counted. Combined, these four have 29 Oscar nominations, and they have five statues. It's about a truck driver, and he turns into a hitman, okay. and he gets involved with the mob crime family. But the thing is, it's three and a half hours long. That's a very long movie. It is, and then I consider, well, I sit down for three and a half hours every Sunday, and I watch... I'd rather eat razor blades. I'm watching the Browns, right? And I'm getting frustrated. But, but you can get up and get snacks. You can, this but if you, if you see, miss something, I'm glad you said that. So there's an Irishman. Um, actually, no, he's Swedish. He's an entertainment writer <laughs> who's talking about the Irishman. We found him on Twitter. Okay. He recommends that you just split this up into four parts. That sounds good. And you make it a four-part miniseries. And we're going to give you a guide as to how to do that. You may want to screenshot this. And you may want to check this out. So zero to 49 minutes. That is according to this guy, part one. Okay. It ends when Jimmy Hoffa ends the phone call. You know, you'll know when that happens. Part two goes from 49 minutes to an hour and 40. And that's when Joey the Blonde is introduced. So stop it there. <laughs> I know, Joey, I love the name. Joey the Blonde. Part three goes from an hour 40 to 247. Cut it when Frank exits the house. And you can watch from that point all the way to the end. Rotten wow. Tomatoes, audience score, I was impressed with this, 86. Well, it's got to be good. Well, I'll say this. Um, don't be surprised if the Irishman needs a truck at the Academy Awards to take home all the statues. This thing is going to clean up. Especially with all those people. Well, speaking of more entertainment news. Yes. I woke up this morning and the first thing I saw on Twitter was the name Billie Eilish and Van Halen. <laughs> and I was like, what is going on? Here's where it all began. You'll see. <laughs> We're you know who Madonna is? I do know who Madonna is. You know, uh, can you name a Van Halen? Who? <laughs> no, I'm who gonna start crying. Sorry. Uh, have you heard? That is where it all began. That's right. Billie Eilish doesn't know who Van Halen is. Now, she's 17 years old. She's not supposed to know who they are. The band was founded in 1972. She was born yeah. in 2001. She just celebrated her birthday. And I think it brought up a great discussion, you know, these days, kids don't always recognize the classic bands from yeah. the 60s and 70s and 80s. Right. What band do you think you kids these days need to know? You too. Mm-hmm. I can um, see but that. you know that's that's from a later generation. I, I don't know who Billie Eilish is. Yeah, and I'm sure Van Halen doesn't either. See, and so it all comes out in the wash. It's the conversation that needs to get started. That's why everybody's <laughs> been talking about it. Seventeen-year-olds. I don't. I don't blame them for not knowing who Van Halen is, but right. they should. Right. You know, Definitely. Especially if you're in the industry. Uh, We're gonna take a quick break. Next on lunch break, uh, you're gonna want to see this. If you have a Cleveland sports fan that you need to shop for over the holidays, we have the perfect gift straight ahead, and we're gonna play a game. So it's like a win-win. One, two, three, one, two, three. Brad Ryder, test one, two, three.
Welcome back to Lunch Break. As Clevelanders, um, we've heard this a thousand times, probably more. Cleveland against the world. Uh, LeBron made it famous. We, we've heard that. It's now a game, a trivia game. Creator Brad, Brad Ryder is here, and he's basically going to tell us how the game works. And we're going to make our own little spin on it as well. We're going to build our lunch plate with each of our wins. So I'm, I'm assuming the, the ball is obviously going to be in Jay's. If I don't win... I am big time I'm going to try, though. Because there's sports questions. And then you get, you, if you win the point, you right. get to put the sandwich there. And then yeah. once we get the whole lunch All plate, right. you win. Okay. Lead the way, So sir. there's two die. One is... Um, uh, one will be either Cleveland or the world. So every card that we have here has a Cleveland side and a world side. Okay. okay. You're and then first going to roll to determine which one you're going to get. And then there's okay. also a number that will determine how many of the answers first? you need you to get first. from the okay. list. Okay. I'll roll. I'll go first. And it's three and it's Cleveland. All right. So Cleveland. Yes. And you've got to get three of this list. I will tell you that there are 10 names on the list. Oh, okay. So through 2018, 10 quarterbacks have thrown 40 or more career touchdown passes as a member of the Browns. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Bernie Kosar. Bernie Kosar is correct. Otto Graham. Otto Graham is Br correct. Brian Seip. Brian Seip is correct. Okay. And you won. You okay. did it. You so got your three. three. Oh, okay. There are so seven more on here. People. If you had rolled a six, you would have had the opportunity to keep getting them. But because I, you got the three, you get your points. Okay. Get your so sandwich. I get my sandwich. Congratulations. Right, my okay. turn. That's a your turn. You're really good Watch, at this. Watch. This is going crazy. Three world. All right. World three. So now these are all any sports team This questions. is not the Cleveland Browns oh, and not okay. the Cleveland Indians. And all right. not, this is not Cleveland. Okay. Fantastic. This is everything else, the rest of the world. This is yeah. not going to be good. <laughs> I think you might be okay. <laughs> From 2000 to 2018, nine different teams won three or more Major League Baseball, NBA, NFL, or NHL championships. Basically, who are the great teams of the last? The cities, right? The cities? Patriots. Teams. teams. The Patriots are oh, one okay. of them. They've won three. Uh, Come on, They've won more than three. Boy. Uh, think baseball. Think I baseball. Am, I am. I am. <laughs> um, this is since 2000. Okay, I'll make it so easy. I think I know go, what um, Warriors. Yeah. The Warriors are correct. Yeah, go NBA. That's good. Go, go um, NBA. Stay in NBA. And then. <laughs> Just trying to do something this to spur terrible. her memory. I'm trying to uh, drag her is along. It, is the world It would be giant if you could get a baseball Giants. team right here. The, the San Francisco Giants. Yeah, there you Nailed go. Right, so good. you get your, your I get my riblet. You okay. Get to eat too. <laughs> so now we've got um, oh Cleveland again. Oh, right, I love Cleveland. my Cleveland Shocker. sports. Shocker. Okay, Cleveland right. and, and three. All right, eight players appeared in a hundred or more regular season games for the 2016 Indians, the team that lost the World Series to the Cubs. I've actually eight been able players to in and how many games? A hundred. A hundred or more. Who were the guys that played the most? for okay. that 2016 um, team. I, you know, it might be tricky, but d did John Gomes play over 100? Not, on, my, not, on, not on your list. Not okay, on so let's go Frankie Lindor. Lindor is correct. Okay, let's go, um, let's go Kipnis. Kipnis is correct. Let's go 2016. That was, um, let's go. Let's go home run game seven. Uh, Rajay. Wait, Rajay Davis played 100 games this year? Sure did. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I'll take this. Thank you, Bets. Uh, Thank you, Bets. I will gloat. I wouldn't have guessed Rajay Davis played 100 games in a million years. I will years. gloat. Okay, uh, okay, Betsy, roll. Here we go. Cleveland. Cleveland three. All right. Oh, my God. As of 2019, basketballreference.com lists six different nicknames for LeBron James. Oh, God. Oh, wow. The King. One. King is one. Um. King James officially, but yes. I don't. Initials. LBJ. Good. Um, the kid from Akron. Akron. The, the, Akron's in there. Akron. Akron guy. Akron kid. Tool, Akron. A tool, a violent tool used for striking nails. Akron hammer. Akron hammer is <laughs> here. Ron Brown's on here. Chosen one. Little Emperor. You get I your chips. Need some chips. You, you get win. Because we're out of time. <laughs> and the Rajay Davis assist was clutch. I know. Right? Where do you get this? Uh, Amazon is the best place. Um, okay. Cleveland against the world, and there's also the uh, other game, You Got No Cleveland, a different type It'd be great of for sports trivia game. Both oh, football parties, absolutely. anything. So you got to get it. Brad, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. We're going to eat lunch. The show's coming back right after this. Riblets. I think I'd like this. <laughs> Looks like a pizza sandwich. <laughs>
Can't believe it. It's December already. That means 22 days left until Christmas. You ready? Yes, kind of. And if you have to mail your gifts, that means you have even less time. That's right. Grab a pen and some paper. Chris Clackham shared the shipping dates you'll need to remember. The delivery services all promise to do the best they can around the holidays. The explosive growth of e-commerce in general has really shifted shopping patterns. It's our peak season. Um, it's peak shopping season and therefore it's peak shipping season. And we're making sure that we have appropriate staffing and, and we'll be ready to deliver everybody's packages and holiday cards. But delivering on time is still dependent upon how early you ship. So here are the deadlines to keep in mind over the next three weeks. For standard shipping, the deadlines are December 13th for UPS, the 14th for the Postal Service, the 16th for FedEx. For priority shipping, both FedEx and UPS want your boxes or packages by December 19th and 20th, the 20th and 21st for the Postal Service. And for the fastest of all deliveries, the overnight shipping, all three want your shipment in hand by no later than December 23rd. Of course, there's a way to avoid shipping deadlines. The earlier you mail your packages is, to, is always better. They also suggest professional packaging. They can take care of that and it really helps to ensure that the package arrives in good condition. This way, the holidays get delivered in good condition, too. I'll be good. <laughs> Chris Clackham, NBC News. And that's that's good info, because if it doesn't get there before Christmas, what good is it? You're you know? in big doo-doo. Yeah, you're in trouble. you got some splaining to do. Um, we're going to take a break, wrap up lunch break when we come back. <laughs> Where was Cleveland against the world when I was at Bowling Green? Yeah, I know. <laughs> can, can you imagine? Down at Cole Hall. <laughs> <laughs> Founders. Oh, Founders. well. Yeah. See, Founders was nice when I was. You were there. in. Yeah. Bowling Green, you know. I was down at OU. We were doing different things. <laughs> yeah, you guys were partying. We were studying. The same different things. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were doing different things.